Without proper roads and fords rather than bridges in the more remote parts, self-sufficiency was a necessity and childhood memories are of hard-working parents and for themselves a busy but happy time feeding stock and helping with the chores. For adults there must have been anxieties, particularly in severe weather. Work of all kinds was time-consuming. Electricity didn't reach Kirk Newton until the 1950s and the College Valley until the 1960s. For many years the only telephone was at Hethpool House. Then, when a telephone box was installed at Southern Nell, the bell rang inside the school so someone could be sent to answer it and messages could be taken. Really to me it was wonderful because it was here in the countryside where you really felt you belonged. Father and mother at Hethpool, an aunt and an uncle at West Newton, and relatives at Cook House. But from a modern house back to basics, there's a bit of a change. The house itself was nice. There wasn't much to do to it. In fact, you couldn't because in them days you didn't have paper. It was just coming back on the market. It was usually uh, the stamper. The ironing was done by the heaters going in the fire. Red hot and you put them in a heater box and there's your ironing. Did away with that because if it was a hot summer's day and you were ironing, good grief, the heat was tremendous. You had to put your name down if you wanted something. I had no lamp. The first one I got was that one in the corner, a famous, which Jim's made into electric. So we'd always lived in houses with no electricity. So the very first time I went in and turned the light on, there was this 10 or 12 or 14 second delay or whatever it was, whilst the engine cracked up to start it, it was on a normal -like trip. And uh, you'd hear this distant thump, 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 and as the engine speeded up and got up to working speed, the light came on dully at first and then got brighter. And, and that was rather strange, but it was a single cylinder Lister and um, diesel engine which knocked out one and a half kilowatts, which wasn't enough to, uh, to drive an electric kettle or an electric fiber, things we'd been used to. And it was the constant drone in the background. The generator was located in the old stable of the old buyer, and there was a bit of soundproofing, so it was a, a, a distant drone until you went out into, into the yard, and then it was a, a fairly sort of um, a fairly loud thumping noise. But I think the other intriguing thing is that late at night, when, when everyone went to bed, and you turned the, la the last light off, that tripped the thing to, to stop the engine, and then the, the noise, the peace and tranquility after the constant drone of an, an engine running in the background was 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 was, was quite refreshing, really. But it was a bit like the Walton sometimes, um, when it was a windy night and uh, we turned off the last light, you'd hear my mum and my dad shout along the cover, has the engine stopped? And we'd all be listening because we were near the stable and shout back, yes or no, and if it was no, they had to get up and go look for the light that was on in the stable or the buyer or somewhere. And again, we couldn't afford to have the thing running overnight just because of the cost of fuel even in, in those days.